Hello. Today I'm going to give an overview of non-negative matrix factorization, or NMF, as it is often abbreviated. In this presentation, I'll begin by introducing non-negative matrix factorization and explaining why it is used. After that, I will run through an example using a database of images of faces. I'll then review some of the techniques used to factorize a matrix using this method, and I'll finish up by going over a few applications. So, to begin, what is non-negative matrix factorization? Well, for those of you familiar with LU decomposition, the general idea is similar. We want to decompose a matrix into two matrices that are each easier to work with than the original, and which multiply together to return your original matrix. Only now, Instead of a lower and upper triangular matrix, we're going to decompose our matrix into a lower dimensional W and H matrices. More formally, given a matrix V with M rows and N columns, where each element is non-negative, NMF will decompose it into a matrix W with M rows and R columns, and a matrix H with R rows and N columns where each of their elements are also non-negative. This problem has many solutions and cannot be solved analytically, so it is generally approximated numerically. In this example down below, we see a 4 by 6 matrix V is approximated as a 4 by 2 matrix W multiplied by a 2 by 6 matrix H. Now, in other words, we are decomposing V into a tall, skinny matrix and a short, wide matrix, where the inner dimension R is set by the user and is less than the smallest dimension of V. We see that the ith column of V is calculated by multiplying the entire matrix W by the ith column of H. Uh, in other words, each column of W is weighted by its corresponding row in HI, and then all weighted columns of W are added together to form a column in V. So, uh, why is it useful to decompose V in such a way? Well, assume that you organize a large data set into a matrix V, where each column is an observation and each row is a feature. For example, you might organize a database of images into a matrix where each column represents an image and each row represents a pixel value in that image. In machine learning, it is often necessary to reduce the feature space of a data set to allow for easier computations. In the, Im in the image example, it is unwieldy to consider each pixel every time an image is handled so it would be nice to break it down into fewer representative components. NMF is, relatively, is a relatively new way of reducing the dimensionality of our data into a linear combination of bases. To be clear, each column of W forms a basis, and by weighting each basis and adding them together, we can get a representation of an observation. Now, methods of reduction using linear combination of bases already exist, such as principal component analysis, or PCA, which weights a set of bases with positive and negative values to blend together one representation, and vector quantization, or VQ, which is sort of a nearest neighbor algorithm, which consists of bases of prototype observations, and the single closest one is given all of the weight. So, because NMF has uh, this non-negative constraint, though it can be used, uh, it can be used to represent data with non-negative features quite well. I used the example of a database of images before because an image is constrained to have only positive pixel intensities. NMF is similar to PCA in that it assigns weights to a set of bases to blend together a representative observation. But the weights and bases are constrained to be positive, so only additive combinations are allowed. This is compatible with the intuitive notion of combining parts 
to form a whole, which is how NMF learns a part-based representation of an observation. So, assuming there is underlying structure or a theme to the data, NMF constructs sparse bases and sparse weightings. Uh, now, what I mean by this will become clearer in the following example from paper by Lee and Sung. So, say we are given a database of images of faces. Each image is 19 by 19, uh, meaning there are 361 pixels in each image. Uh, and we are given 2,429 pictures of faces. We organize this data set into a matrix V that is 361 by 2,429, so each column represents an image. We then assign V 49 bases and decompose it into W and H matrices. We compare NMF to VQ and PCA by giving them the same database to train on and then presenting them with a new face. The results are shown on the right here, starting with NMF at the top, VQ in the middle, and PCA at the bottom. The new face here, the new face is here, and the bases for each method are arranged into seven by seven grids here, here, and here. Uh, the weights for each basis are arranged in 7x7 seven seven grids here, here, and here. And the result in a representation of the, original, of the original face here, here, and here. While VQ chooses 49 prototype faces from the dataset and PCA has dense matrices of positive and negative pixel values, we see that the bases of NMF are parts of a face. Each basis is mostly empty space, meaning it is a sparse matrix, and the weight vector, constrained to, be, uh, constrained to being additive, only applies weights to certain versions of facial features, meaning there are many empty cells here too. So, uh, the black box up to this point has been uh, has taken in a matrix V and returned W and H. How is this done? We are trying to solve the following problem. Minimize the squared distance of V minus W times H with respect to W and H, subject to the constraints that W and H must be non-negative. Often, the distance metric used uh, by researchers here is the Euclidean or Frobenius distance. Since W and H can both vary, there are two popular approaches for solving this problem numerically. The first is coordinate descent, whereby the fir first we fit uh, we fix W and optimize H with gradient descent. Then we fix H and optimize W with gradient descent. This process is repeated until a tolerance is met. The other method is a multiplicative update whereby the following update uh, steps are repeated until a tolerance is met. Uh, this update step is, is simply a reforming of the gradient descent step from a summation problem to a product problem. Note then that since W and H are not positive semi-definite, these methods can only find local minimum, uh, minima, not necessarily a global minimum. Still, a local minimum is often good enough to extract useful bases. Non-negative matrix factorization is beginning to be used in many fields. As with my earlier example, it has a use in computer vision for reducing the feature space of images. This can be useful in identifying and classifying images. It is also used in text mining. For example, you might organize a series of documents into a matrix where each row is the uh, frequency of a particular word, and each column is a single document. Then you would extract semantic features about the data. Uh, lastly, NMF is being used to break audio recordings of speech down into speech parts and variable noise parts so that the speech parts alone can be isolated. And that does it for this overview of non-negative matrix factorization. Here are my sources for those interested. Thanks for watching.